Chinese theology, which comes in different interpretations according to the classic texts and the common religion, and specifically Confucian, Taoist and other philosophical formulations, is fundamentally monistic, that is to say it sees the world and the gods of its phenomena as an organic whole, or cosmos, which continuously emerges from a simple principle. This is expressed by the concept that, "...all things have one and the same principle." Wanwu yila wanwu yi li. This principle is commonly referred to as Tian Tian, a concept generally translated as heaven, referring to the northern culmin and starry vault of the skies and its natural laws which regulate earthly phenomena and generate beings as their progenitors. Ancestors are therefore regarded as the equivalent of heaven within human society, and therefore as the means connecting back to heaven which is the utmost ancestral father, saying Zhu Fu Zhengju Fu. Chinese theology may be also called Taingzue Tianze, study of heaven, a term already in use in the 17th and 18th century. In contrast to the god of Western religions who is outside space and time, the god of Fuxi, Zhuanyuan, and Wang Yangming is in our space and time. To Chinese thought, ancestor is creator. The universal principle that gives origin to the world is conceived as transcendent and immanent to creation, at the same time. The Chinese idea of the universal God is expressed in different ways. There are many names of God from the different sources of Chinese tradition, reflecting a hierarchic, multi perspective observation of the Supreme God. Chinese scholars emphasize that the Chinese tradition contains two facets of the idea of God one is the personified God of popular devotion, and the other one is the impersonal God of philosophical inquiry. Together they express an integrated definition of the monistic world. Interest in traditional Chinese theology has waxed and waned over the various periods of the history of China. For instance, the Great Leap Forward enacted in the mid-20th century involved the outright destruction of traditional temples in accordance with Maoist ideology. From the 1980s onwards, public revivals have taken place. The Chinese believe that deities or stars, are arranged in a celestial bureaucracy which influences earthly activities and is reflected by the hierarchy of the Chinese state itself. These beliefs have similarities with broader Asian shamanism. The alignment of earthly and heavenly forces is upheld through the practice of rites, for instance the Zhao festivals in which sacrificial offerings of incense and other products are set up by local temples, participants hoping to renew the perceived alliance between community leaders and the gods. Creation as ordering of primordial potentiality As explained by the scholar Stefan Feuchtwang, in Chinese cosmology, "...the universe creates itself out of a primary chaos of material energy." Hundun Hun Dun and Qi Qi, organizing as the polarity of yin and yang which characterizes anything in life. Creation is therefore a continuous ordering, it is not a creation ex nihilo. Yin and yang are the invisible and the visible, the receptive and the active, the unshaped and the shaped, they characterize the yearly cycle winter and summer, the landscape shady and bright, the sexes female and male, and even socio-political history disorder and order. The gods themselves are divided in yin forces of contraction, gui gui, demons, or ghosts, and yang forces of expansion shane shane, gods, or spirits. In the human being they are the hun hun and po po where hun is yang and po is yin, respectively the rational and emotional soul, or the ethereal and the corporeal soul. Together, gui shen gui shen is another way to define the twofold operation of the god of heaven, its resulting dynamism being called itself shen, spirit. By the words of the neo-Confucian thinker Cheng Yi, heaven is called the Gui Shen with respect to its operation, the Shen with respect to its wonderful functioning. Another Neo Confucian, Zhu Shi, says The Shen is expansion and the Gui is contraction. As long as it is blowing wind, raining, thundering, or flashing, we call it Shen, while it stops, we call it Gui. The dragon, associated to the constellation Draco winding the north ecliptic pole and slithering between the Little and Big Dipper, or Great Chariot, represents the Protean. Primordial power, which embodies both yin and yang in unity, and therefore the awesome unlimited power qi of divinity. In Han dynasty traditions, Draco is described as the spear of the supreme god. Heaven continuously begets according to its own manifest model, which is the starry vault revolving around the northern culmin 
and reabsorbs, the temporal things and worlds. As explained in modern Confucian theology, the historical heaven, namely the generated heaven, is one particular form or modification marked by the emergence of celestial bodies of the eternal heaven. This eternal heaven was embodied in pure qi before its historical form had been realized. Rather than creation, Zhao Zhao, which has a long Western connotation of creation ex nihilo, modern Chinese theologians prefer to speak of evolution wa wa to describe the begetting of the cosmos. Even in modern Chinese language, the two concepts are frequently held together. Zalwa, creation evolution. Such ordering power, which belongs to deities but also to humans, expresses itself in rites. Li li. They are the means by which alignment between the forces of the starry sky, of earthly phenomena, and the acts of human beings, the three realms of heaven earth humanity, Tian de Ren Tiandaren, is established. Such harmonization is referred to as centering, yang yang or zhang zhang. Rituals may be performed by government officials, family elders, popular ritual masters, and Taoists, the latter cultivating local gods to center the forces of the universe upon a particular locality. Since humans are capable of centering natural forces, by the means of rites, they are themselves central to creation. So, human beings participate in the ongoing creation evolution of the God of Heaven, acting as ancestors who may produce and influence other beings. The involvement of an evolution in the divine creation hints that, although the Creator functions everywhere and all the time, every little creation is also participated by one particular thing which was previously created by the Creator. That is to say, each creature plays both the roles of creature and creator, and consequently is not only a fixed constituent of, but also a promoter and author of, the diversity or richness of the world. The relationship between oneness and multiplicity, between the supreme principle and the myriad things, is notably explained by Zhu Xi through the metaphor of the moon. Fundamentally there is only one great pole Taiji, yet each of the myriad things has been endowed with it and each in itself possesses the great ultimate in its entirety. This is similar to the fact that there is only one moon in the sky, but when its light is scattered upon rivers and lakes, it can be seen everywhere. It cannot be said that the moon has been split. In his terminology, the myriad things are generated as effects or actualities yang yang of the supreme principle, which, before in potence tt, sets in motion qi. The effects are different, forming the myriad species, wan shu wan shu, each relying upon their myriad modifications of the principle, depending on the varying contexts and engagements. Difference exists not only between the various categories of beings, but among individuals belonging to the same category as well, so that each creature is a unique coalescence of the cosmic principle. The qi of kindred beings accord and communicate with one another, and the same happens for the qi of worshippers and the god receiving sacrifice, and for the qi of an ancestor and his descendants. All beings are, at different levels, in the God of Heaven, not in the sense of addition but in the sense of belonging, in the Confucian tradition, the perfect government is that which emulates the ordering of the starry vault of Heaven. To conduct government by virtue may be compared to the North Star, it occupied its place, while the myriad stars revolve around it. Topic. Names and attributes of the God of Heaven in the tradition Tian is Dian Dian. Top. The highest and unexceeded. It derives from the characters yi yi, one, and da da, big. Since the Shang 1600 to 1046 BCE and Zhou Dynasty 8104625 BCE, the radical Chinese terms for the supreme god are Tian Tian and Shang Di Shang Di, the highest deity, or simply Di Di, deity. Another concept is Tai Di Tai Di, the great deity. These names are combined in different ways in Chinese theological literature, often interchanged in the same paragraph if not in the same sentence. One of the combinations is the name of God used at the Temple of Heaven in Beijing, which is the highest deity the Heavenly King. Huang Tian Shang Di Wang Tian Shang Di, others are Great Deity the Heavenly King, Tian Huang Da Di Tian Wang Daddy, and Supreme Deity of the Vast Heaven. Hao Tian Shang Di Haoshan Shang Di, God is considered manifest in this world as the northern culmin and starry vault of the skies which regulate nature. 
as its C, the circumpolar stars the Little and Big Dipper, or broader Ursa Minor and Ursa Major are known, among various names, as Tianmen Tianmen Gate of Heaven, and Tianshu Tian Shu, Pivot of Heaven, or the Celestial Clock, regulating the four seasons of time. The Chinese Supreme God is compared to the conception of the Supreme God identified as the North Celestial Pole in other cultures, including the Mesopotamian and Heaven itself, and Enlil and Enki, Marduk, the Vedic Indra and Mitra Varuna, the Zoroastrian Ahura Mazda, as well as the dais of common Proto-Indo-European religion. Throughout the Chinese theological literary tradition, the Dipper constellations, and especially the Big Dipper Northern Dipper, also known as Great Chariot, within Ursa Major, are portrayed as the potent symbol of spirit, divinity, or of the activity of the supreme god regulating nature. Examples include the Dipper is the deity's carriage. It revolves about the center, visiting and regulating each of the four regions. It divides yin from yang, establishes the four seasons, equalizes the five elemental phases, deploys the seasonal junctures and angular measures, and determines the various periodicities. All these are tied to the Dipper. When the handle of the Dipper points to the east at dawn, it is spring to all the world. When the handle of the Dipper points to the south, it is summer to all the world. When the handle of the dipper points to the west, it is autumn to all the world. When the handle of the dipper points to the north, it is winter to all the world. As the handle of the dipper rotates above, so affairs are set below. D is literally a title expressing dominance over the all under heaven, that is all created things. It is etymologically and figuratively analogous to the concept of D as the base of a fruit, which falls and produces other fruits. This analogy is attested in the Shuowen Jiezi explaining deity as what faces the base of a melon fruit. Tian is usually translated as heaven, but by graphical etymology it means great one, and scholars relate it to the same D through phonetic etymology and trace their common root, through their archaic forms respectively asterisk T and asterisk Ts, to the symbols of the celestial pole and its spinning stars. Other words, such as ding ding on top. Apex. Would share the same etymology, all connected to a conceptualization. According to the scholar John C. Didier. Of the North Celestial Pole Godhead as Cosmic Square. Ding Ko. Zhou. 2005. Even connects D. Through Old Chinese asterisk Ts and by phonetic etymology. To the Proto-Indo-European dais. Medhurst. 1847. Also shows affinities in the usage of. Deity. Chinese D, Greek Theos and Latin Deus, for incarnate powers resembling the Supreme Godhead. Shangzhou theology Ulrich Lebrecht distinguishes two layers in the development of early Chinese theology, traditions derived respectively from the Shang and subsequent Zhou dynasties. The religion of the Shang was based on the worship of ancestors and god kings, who survived as unseen divine forces after death. They were not transcendent entities, since the cosmos was, by itself so, not created by a force outside of it but generated by internal rhythms and cosmic powers. The royal ancestors were called de deities, and the utmost progenitor was Shangdi, identified as the dragon. Already in Shang theology, the multiplicity of gods of nature and ancestors were viewed as parts of Shangdi, and the four fang directions, or sides, and their feng winds. As his cosmic will, the Zhou dynasty, which overthrew the Shang, emphasized a more universal idea of Tian heaven. The Shang dynasty's identification of Shangdi as their ancestor god had asserted their claim to power by divine right. The Zhou transformed this claim into a legitimacy based on moral power, the mandate of heaven. In Zhou theology, Tian had no singular earthly progeny, but bestowed divine favor on virtuous rulers. Zhou kings declared that their victory over the Shang was because they were virtuous and loved their people, while the Shang were tyrants and thus were deprived of power by Tian. Topic. Tian 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 is both transcendent and immanent as the starry vault, manifesting in the three forms of dominance, destiny and nature. There are many compounds of the name Tian, and many of these clearly distinguish a heaven of dominance, a heaven of destiny, and a heaven of nature as attributes of the supreme cosmic god, in the Wujing Yi, Wujing Yi different meanings in the five classics. 
Xu Shen explains that the designation of heaven is quintuple. Huang Tian Huang Tian, yellow heaven, or shining heaven, when it is venerated as the Lord of Creation. Hao Tian Hao Tian, vast heaven, with regard to the vastness of its vital breath. Qi. Min Tian Min Tian, compassionate heaven, for it hears and corresponds with justice to the all under heaven. Shang Tian Shang Tian, highest heaven, or first heaven. For it is the primordial being supervising all under heaven. Kang Tian Kang Tian. Deep green heaven. For it being unfathomably deep. Other names of the god of heaven include Tiandi Tian Di. The deity of heaven. Or emperor of heaven. On rectification. Zheng Lun of the Zunzi uses this term to refer to the active god of heaven setting in motion creation. Tianzu Tianzu. The lord of heaven. In the document of offering sacrifices to heaven and earth on the mountain Tai. Fengshan Shu of the records of the Grand Historian it is used as the title of the first god from whom all the other gods derive. Tianhuang Tianhuang. The King of Heaven. In the Poem of Fathoming Profundity. Sishan Fu, transcribed in The History of the Later Han Dynasty. Hu Han Shu, Zhang Heng ornately writes, I ask the superintendent of the heavenly gate to open the door and let me visit the king of heaven at the Jade Palace. Tian Gong Tian Gong. The Duke of Heaven. Or General of Heaven. Tian Jun Tian Jun. The Prince of Heaven. Or Lord of Heaven. Tian Zun Tian Zun. The Heavenly Venerable. Also a title for high gods in Taoist theologies. Tianshan Tian Shane, the God of Heaven, interpreted in the Shuowen Jiezi as the being that gives birth to all things. Shenhuang Shane Huang, God the King, attested in Taihong, the origin of vital breath. Lao Ye, Lao Tian Ye, the Olden Heavenly Father. Attributes of the Supreme God of Heaven include Tian Dao Tian Dao, Way of Heaven. It is the God's will of power, which decides the development of things. The Book of Historical Documents says that the way of heaven is to bless the good, and make the bad miserable. It is also the name of some religious traditions. Tianming Tianming. Mandate of heaven. Defining the destiny of things. Tianyi Tianyi. Decree of heaven. The same concept of destiny but implying an active decision. Tianzhi Tian Sha. Under heaven means creation, ongoingly generated by the Supreme God. Topic. Shangdi 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 Highest Deity Sometimes shortened simply to Di Deity is another name of the Supreme God inherited from Shang and Zhou times. The classic of poetry recites, How vast is the highest deity, the ruler of men below. D is also applied to the name of cosmic gods besides the supreme godhead, and is used to compose titles of divinity, for instance De Jun Di Jun, divine ruler, Latin, Dominus Deus, used in Taoism for high deities in the celestial hierarchy. In the Shang dynasty, as discussed by John C. Didier, Shangdi was the same as Ding, Ko modern Ding, the square, as the north celestial pole, and Shangjia, Shang supreme ancestor, was an alternative name. Shangdi was conceived as the utmost ancestor of the Shang royal lineage, the Zi Z lineage, also called Ku or Kui or Diku, Divus Ku, attested in the Shiji and other texts. The other gods associated with the circumpolar stars were all embraced by Shangdi, and they were conceived as the ancestors of side noble lineages of the Shang and even non-Shang peripheral peoples who benefited from the identification of their ancestor gods as part of Di. Together they were called Sha Di Shadi, lower deities part of the highest deity of the Shang. With the supreme god identified as the pivot of the skies, all the lesser gods were its stars Xing Xing, a word which in Shang script was illustrated by a few grouped Ko Ding CF, Jing Jing, perfect celestial, i.e., star light, and Pin Pin, originally, starlight. Up to the Han dynasty it was still common to represent the stars as small squares. The Shang conducted magnificent sacrifices to these ancestor gods, whose altar mimicked the stars of the North Celestial Pole. 
Through this sympathetic magic, which consisted in reproducing the celestial center on Earth, the Shang established and monopolized the centralizing political power. <laughs> Qin Han theology The emperors of the Qin dynasty 221 BCE are credited with an effort to unify the cults of the Wufang Shangdi, Wu Fang Shangdi five forms of the highest deity, which were previously held at different locations, in single temple complexes. The five deities are a cosmological conception of the fivefold manifestation of the Supreme God, or his five changing faces, that goes back to the Neolithic and continues in the classic texts. They reflect the cosmic structure of the world," in which yin, yang and all forces are held in balance, and are associated with the four directions of space and the center, the five sacred mountains, the five phases of creation, and the five constellations rotating around the celestial pole and five planets. During the Han Dynasty 206 BCE to 220 CE, the theology of the state religion developed side by side with the Huang Lao religious movement which in turn influenced the early Taoist church, and focused on a conceptualization of the supreme god of the culmin of the sky as the yellow god of the center, and its human incarnation, the yellow emperor or yellow deity. Unlike previous Shang concepts of human incarnations of the supreme godhead, considered exclusively as the progenitors of the royal lineage, the yellow emperor was a more universal archetype of the human being. The competing factions of the Confucians and the Fangxi Fang masters of directions, regarded as representatives of the ancient religious tradition inherited from previous dynasties, concurred in the formulation of Han state religion. Taiyi Taiyi, Taiyi also spelled Taiyi Taiyi or Taiyi Taiyi, Great Oneness, or Great Unity, also known as Supreme Oneness of the Central Yellow, Zhang Huang Taiyi Zhang Wang Taiyi, or the Yellow God of the Northern Dipper, Huang Shen Bei Do Wang Shen Bei Do, or Heavenly Venerable Supreme Unity. Tai Yi Tianzun Tai Yi Tianzun, is a name of the supreme god of heaven that had become prominent besides the older ones by the Han dynasty in relation with the figure of the Yellow Emperor. It harkens back to the Warring States period, as attested in the poem The Supreme Oneness Gives Birth to Water, and possibly to the Shang dynasty as Dai, Dai Big Oneness. An alternative name for the Shangs and Universe's foremost ancestor, Taiyi was worshipped by the social elites in the Warring States, and is also the first god described in the Nine Songs, shamanic hymns collected in the Chuchi songs of Chu. Throughout the Qin and the Han dynasty, a distinction became evident between Taiyi as the supreme godhead identified with the northern culmin of the sky and its spinning stars, and a more abstract concept of Yi, one which begets the polar godhead and then the myriad beings, the more abstract Yi was an interiorization of the supreme god which was influenced by the Confucian discourse. During the Han dynasty, Taiyi became part of the imperial cult, and at the same time it was the central concept of Huang Lao, which influenced the early Taoist church. In early Taoism, Taiyi was identified as the Tao Tao. The inscription for Laozi Laozi Ming, a Han stela, describes the Taiyi as the source of inspiration and immortality for Laozi. In Huang Lao the philosopher god Laozi was identified as the same as the Yellow Emperor, and received imperial sacrifices, for instance by Emperor Huan 146 in Han apocryphal texts, the Big Dipper is described as the instrument of Taiyi, the ladle from which he pours out the primordial breath Yuanqi, and as his heavenly chariot, a part of the Shiji by Sima Qian identifies Taiyi with the simple name Di deity and tells The Dipper is the Thirch's carriage. It revolves around the central point and majestically regulates the four realms. The distribution of yin and yang, the fixing of the four seasons, the coordination of the five phases, the progression of rotational measurements, and the determining of all celestial markers—all of these are linked to the dipper. In 113 BCE, Emperor Wu of Han, under the influence of prominent Fangxi, Mu Ji and later Gongsun Qing, officially integrated the Huang Lao theology of Taiyi with the Confucian state religion and theology of the five forms of the highest deity inherited from the erstwhile dynasties. Topic. Wangdi Wangdi, Huangdi, Yellow Emperor, or Yellow Deity, 
is another name of the god of heaven, associated with the celestial pole and with the power of the Wu shamans. In the older cosmological tradition of the Wufang Shangdi, the yellow deity is the main one, associated with the center of the cosmos. He is also called Wangshan Huang Shane, yellow god, Zuanyuan, Zanyu, chariot shaft, which is said to have been his personal name as a human incarnation, Zuanyuanshi, Zanyuan, master of the chariot shaft, or Zuanyuan Wangdi, yellow deity of the chariot shaft. In Chinese religion he is the deity who shapes the material world Didi, the creator of the Waxia civilization, of marriage and morality, language and lineage, and progenitor of all Chinese. In the cosmology of the Wufang Shangdi his astral body is Saturn, but he is also identified as the sun god, and with the star Regulus Alpha Leonis and constellations Leo and Lynx, of which the latter is said to represent the body of the yellow dragon, his serpentine form. The character Huang Huang, for yellow also means, by homophony and shared etymology with Huang Huang, August, Creator, and Radiant, attributes of the Supreme God, as a progenitor, Wangdi is portrayed as the historical incarnation of the Yellow God of the Northern Dipper. According to a definition given by apocryphal texts related to the Heidu Hei Tu, the Yellow Emperor, proceeds from the essence of the Yellow God of the Northern Dipper, is born to a daughter of a thonic deity. And as such, he is a cosmic product of the conflation of heaven and earth. As a human being, the Yellow Emperor was conceived by a virgin mother, Fubao, who was impregnated by Taiyi's radiance, Yuanqi, primordial Numa, a lightning, which she saw encircling the Northern Dipper, Great Chariot, or broader Ursa Major, or the Celestial Pole, while walking in the countryside. She delivered her son after 24 months on the Mount of Shou, longevity, or Mount Zuanyuan, after which he was named. Through his human side, he was a descendant of Yushang Shi Yushang, the lineage of the bear another reference to the Ursa Major. Didier has studied the parallels that the Yellow Emperor's mythology has in other cultures, deducing a plausible ancient origin of the myth in Siberia or in North Asia. In older accounts, the Yellow Emperor is identified as a deity of light, and his name is explained in the Shuowen Jiezi to derive from Guang Guang, light, and thunder, and as one and the same with the thunder god. Lai Shen Laishan, who in turn, as a later mythological character, is distinguished as the Yellow Emperor's foremost pupil, such as in the Wangdi Nijing. As the deity of the center, the Yellow Emperor is the Zongyuedadi, Zhang Yudadi, great deity of the central peak, and he represents the essence of earth and the yellow dragon. He represents the hub of creation, the axis mundi that is the manifestation of the divine order in physical reality, opening the way to immortality. As the center of the four directions, in the Shizi he is described as Yellow Emperor with Four Faces. Huang Di Simian Wang Di Simian, the Four Faced God, or Ubiquitous God, Simian Shane Simian Shen is also the Chinese name of Brahma. Wang Di is the model of those who merge their self with the self of the Supreme God, of the ascetics who reach enlightenment or immortality. He is the god of nobility, the patron of Taoism and medicine. In the Shiji, as well as in the Taoist book Zhuangzi, he is also described as the perfect king. There are records of dialogues in which Wangdi took the advice of wise counselors, contained in the Wangdi Nijing, Inner Scripture of the Yellow Emperor, as well as in the Shiwen, Ten Questions. In the Huang Lao tradition, he is the model of a king turned immortal, and is associated with the transmission of various mantic and medical techniques. Besides the inner scripture of the Yellow Emperor, Wangdi is also associated to other textual bodies of knowledge including the Wangdi Sijing, Four Scriptures of the Yellow Emperor, and the Wangdi Jijing, Scripture of the Dwellings of the Yellow Emperor. In the cosmology of the Wufang Shangdi, besides the Yellow Deity, the Black Deity of the North, Winter and Mercury, is portrayed by Sima Qian as Wangdi's grandson, and is himself associated with the North Pole Stars. The Green Deity, or Blue Deity, Kang Di Kang Di or Ching Di Ching Di, of the East, Spring, and identified with Jupiter, is frequently worshipped as the Supreme God and its main temple at Mount Tai, the cult center of all Eastern Peak Temples, is attested as a site for fire sacrifices to the Supreme God since prehistoric times. Topic Yudi 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 Jade Deity or Jade Emperor, or Yuang, 
Yuhua Jade King is a personification of the supreme god of heaven in popular religion. More elaborate names for the jade deity include Yuang Shangdi, Yu Huang Shang, highest deity the jade king, and Yuang Dadi, Yu Huang Dadi, great deity the jade king. While among the common people he is intimately referred to as the lord of heaven. Tian Gong Tian Gong, he is also present in Taoist theology, where, however, he is not regarded as the supreme principle though he has a high position in the pantheon. In Taoism his formal title is the Most Honorable Great Deity the Jade King in the Golden Tower of the Clear Heaven. Heoshan Jinkei Zhizhen Yuang Dadi Hao Tian Jin Kei Ji Zun Yu Huang Da Di, and he is one of the four sovereigns, the four deities proceeding directly from the three pure ones, which in Taoism are the representation of the supreme principle. The eminence of the Jade deity is relatively recent, emerging in popular religion during the Tang Dynasty (618–907) and becoming established during the Song Dynasty (960–1279), especially under Emperor Zhenzong and Emperor Hizong of Song. By the Tang dynasty the name of Jade King had been widely adopted by the common people to refer to the God of Heaven, and this got the attention of the Taoists who integrated the deity in their pantheon. The cult of the Jade deity became so widespread that during the Song dynasty it was proclaimed by imperial decree that this popular conception of God was the same supreme God of Heaven whom the elites had the privilege to worship at the Temple of Heaven. There are a great number of temples in China dedicated to the Jade deity Yu Huang Miao Yuang Miao or Yu Huang Zhe Yuang Zhe, et al., and his birthday on the ninth day of the first month of the Chinese calendar is one of the biggest festivals. He is also celebrated on the 25th day of the 12th month, when he is believed to turn to the human world to inspect all goods and evils to determine awards or punishments. In everyday language the Jade Deity is also called the Olden Heavenly Father and simply Heaven. Tidy Tidy, Tidy Utmost Deity, or Great Deity is another name that has been used to describe the Supreme God in some contexts. It appears in the mysical narratives of the Huainanzi where the Spreme God is associated to the Mount Kunlun, the Axis Mundi. Shen Shane Shane is a general concept meaning, spirit and usually defines the plurality of gods in the world, however in certain contexts it has been used as singular denoting the supreme god, the being that gives birth to all things. Concepts including Shen expressing the idea of the supreme god include Tianshan Tian Shen, the god of heaven, interpreted in the Shuowen Jiezi Shuo Wen Jiezi as the being that gives birth to all things. Shenhuang Shen Huang, god the king. Attested in Taihong, the origin of vital breath, Shen Dao, Shane, the way of the God S. In the Yijing, is the path or way of manifestation of the Supreme God and the gods of nature. It is too delicate to be grasped. It cannot be perceived through reason. It cannot be seen through the eyes. It does without knowing how it can do. This is what we call the way of the God S. Since the Qin and Han dynasty, Shen Dao became a descriptor for the Chinese religion, as the Shejiao Shi Jiao, social religion, of the nation. The phrase Shendao Shejiao, Shendao Shi Jiao, literally means established religion of the way of the gods. Topic Z. Z Z literally meaning son, male offspring is another concept associated to the Supreme God of Heaven as the North Celestial Pole and its spinning stars. ZZ, meaning, word, and symbol, is one of its near homophonous and graphic cognates. It was the surname used by the royal lineage of the Shang dynasty. It is a component of concepts including Tianzi Tianzi, son of heaven, and Junzi Junzi, son of a lord, which in Confucianism became the concept of morally perfected person. According to Didier, in Shang and Zhou forms, the grapheme Z itself depicts someone linked to the godhead of the squared north celestial pole code ding, and is related to Zhang Zhang, the concept of spiritual and thus political centrality. In modern Chinese popular religion Z is a synonym of Lu Lu, prosperity, furthering, welfare, luxing, Lu star of prosperity, 
is Mizar, a star of the Big Dipper Great Chariot constellation which rotates around the North Celestial Pole, it is the second star of the handle of the Dipper. Luxing is conceived as a member of two clusters of gods, the Sangsing three stars, and the Zhuangshan nine god kings. The latter are the seven stars of the Big Dipper with the addition of two less visible ones thwartwise the handle and they are conceived as the ninfold manifestation of the supreme god of heaven, which in this tradition is called Zhuangdadi, Zhuhuangdadi, great deity of the nine kings, Zanshan Shangdi, Zantian Shangdi, highest deity of the dark heaven, or Dufu, Dofu, father of the chariot. The number nine is for this reason associated with the yang masculine power of the dragon, and celebrated in the double ninth festival and nine god kings festival. The Big Dipper is the expansion of the supreme principle, governing waxing and life yang, while the Little Dipper is its reabsorption, governing waning and death yin. The mother of the Zhuangshan is Dumu, Dou mother of the chariot, the female aspect of the supreme. Theology of the schools As explained by Stefan Feuchtwang, the fundamental difference between Confucianism and Taoism lies in the fact that the former focuses on the realization of the starry order of heaven in human society, while the latter on the contemplation of the Tao which spontaneously arises in nature. Taoism also focuses on the cultivation of local gods, to center the order of heaven upon a particular locality. Topic. Confucian theology. Confucius (551–479 BCE) emerged in the Critical Warring States period as a reformer of the religious tradition inherited from the Shang and Zhou dynasties. His elaboration of ancient theology gives centrality to self-cultivation and human agency, and to the educational power of the self-established individual in assisting others to establish themselves. The principle of I Ren Aaron, loving others. Philosophers in the Warring States compiled in the Analects, and formulated the classic metaphysics which became the lash of Confucianism. In accordance with the Master, they identified mental tranquility as the state of Tian, or the One yi yi, which in each individual is the heaven-bestowed divine power to rule one's own life and the world. Going beyond the Master, they theorized the oneness of production and reabsorption into the cosmic source, and the possibility to understand and therefore reattain it through meditation. This line of thought would have influenced all Chinese individual and collective political mystical theories and practices thereafter. Fu Pei Jun characterizes the heaven of ancient Confucianism, before the Qin dynasty, as dominator, creator, sustainer, revealer, and judge. The Han Dynasty Confucian scholar Dong Zongshu BCE described heaven as the supreme god possessing a will. In the Song Dynasty, Neo-Confucianism, especially the major exponent Zhu Xi (1130–1200), generally rationalized the theology, cosmology, and ontology inherited from the foregoing tradition. Neo-Confucian thinkers reaffirmed the unity of the heavenly city and the earthly divine city. The city that the God of Heaven morally organizes in the natural world through humanity is not ontologically separate from heaven itself, so that the compound heaven earth. Tian de Tiandi is another name of the God of Heaven itself in Neo-Confucian texts. Heaven contains Earth as part of its nature, and the myriad things are begotten sheng sheng by Heaven and raised up yang yang by Earth. Neo-Confucians also discussed Heaven under the term Taiji Taiji Great Pole. Stefan Feuchtwang says that Confucianism consists in the search for middle ways between yin and yang in each new configuration of the world, to align reality with Heaven through rites. The order of heaven is emphasized, it is a moral power and fully realizes in patriarchy, that is to say the worship of progenitors, in the Han tradition in the male line, who are considered to have embodied heaven. This conception is put into practice as the religious worship of progenitors in the system of ancestral shrines, dedicated to the deified progenitors of lineages groups of families sharing the same surname. The philosopher Promise Xu identifies Tian as the foundation of a civil theology of China. Topic. Three models Huang Yang has discerned three models of theology in the Confucian tradition 
I Theology of Heaven is discussed in the Confucian canonical texts, the Classic of History, the Classic of Poetry and the Analects of Confucius, as a transcendent god similar to the god of the Hellenistic and Abrahamic traditions. E Theology of Heaven in Contemporary New Confucianism, represented especially by Shang Shili, Mo Zongsen, and Tu Weiming, as an imminently transcendent God, the ultimate reality imminent in the world to transcend the world. E Theology of Heaven in Neo Confucianism, particularly the Cheng brothers in the Song dynasty, as the wonderful life giving activity transcending the world within the world. Topic. Canonical theology the supreme power in Confucianism is Tian, Shangdi or Di in the earlier classic Confucian tradition, later also discussed in its activity as Tian Li Tianli or Tian Dao Tiandao, the Order of Heaven, or Way of Heaven, by Neo-Confucians. A number of scholars support the theistic reading of early Confucian texts. In the Analects heaven is treated as a conscious and providential being concerned not only with the human order in general, but with Confucius' own mission in particular. Confucius claimed to be a transmitter of an ancient knowledge rather than a renovator. In Confucianism, God has not created man in order to neglect him, but is always with man, and sustains the order of nature and human society, by teaching rulers how to be good to secure the peace of the countries. The theistic idea of early Confucianism gave later way to a depersonalization of heaven, identifying it as the pattern discernible in the unfolding of nature and his will as people's consensus, culminating in the Mencius and the Zunzi. Topic. Imminent transcendence Contemporary New Confucian theologians have resolved the ancient dispute between the theistic and nontheistic, imminent and transcendent interpretations of Tian, elaborating the concept of imminent transcendence, ne zai chao yu, ne zai chao yue, contrasting it with the external transcendence wai zai chao yu, wai zai chao yue, of the God of Christianity. While the God of the Christians is outside the world that he creates, the God of the Confucians is imminent in the world to call for the transcendence of the given situation, thus promoting an ongoing transformation. The first theologian to discuss imminent transcendence was Shang Shili. According to him, noumenon and phenomenon yang yang are not separate, but the noumenon is right within the phenomenon. At the same time, the noumenon is also transcendent, not in the sense that it has independent existence, separated from the 10,000 things, but in the sense that it is the substance of all things. As the substance, it is transcendent because it is not transformed by the 10,000 things but is rather their master, it transcends the surface of things. By transcending the surface, one realizes the self-nature of himself and of all things, to the extent that a thing has not fully realized its own self-nature, God is also that on which any particular thing or human being depends yi ta shen, yi ta shen. .According to the further explanations of Shang's student Mo Zongsen, heaven is not merely the sky, and just like the God of the Judaic and Hellenistic Christian tradition, it is not one of the beings in the world. However, unlike the god of Western religions, the god of Confucianism is not outside the world either, but is within humans—who are the primary concern of Confucianism—and within other beings in the world. Tian is the ontological substance of reality, it is imminent in every human being as the human nature Ren. however, the human being on the phenomenal level is not identical with its metaphysical essence. Mencius stated that the one who can fully realize one's heart-mind can understand one's nature, and the one who can understand one's own nature can know Tian. This means that Tian is within the human being, but before this last comes to realize his true heart-mind, or know his true nature, heaven still appears transcendent to him. Mo cites Max Muller saying that a human being itself is potentially a god, a god one presently ought to become, to explain the idea of the relationship of God and humanity in Confucianism and other Eastern religions. What is crucial is to transcend the phenomenon to reach Tian. Mo makes an important distinction between Confucianism and Christianity. The latter does not ask one to become a Christ, because the nature of Christ is unreachable for ordinary humans, who are not conceived as having a divine essence. By contrast, in Confucianism, sages who have realized Tian teach to others how to become sages and worthy themselves, since heaven is present in everyone and may be cultivated. Mo defines Confucianism as a religion of morality a religion of the fulfillment of virtues, whose meaning lies in seeking the infinite and the complete in the finitude of earthly life. Tu Weiming, a student of Mo, furtherly develops the theology of imminent transcendence. 
by his own words, A person is in this world and yet does not belong to this world. He regards this secular world as divine only because he realizes the divine value in this secular world. Here the secular world in which the divinity is manifested is not a world separate from the divinity, and the divinity manifested in the secular is not some ideal externally transcendent of the secular world. According to two, the more man may penetrate his own inner source, the more he may transcend himself. By the metaphorical words of Mencius 7a29, this process is like digging a well to reach the source of water. It is for this emphasis on transcending the phenomena to reach the true self, which is the divine, that too defines Confucian religiosity as the ultimate self-transformation as a communal act and as a faithful dialogical response to the transcendent. Confucianism is about developing the nature of humanity in the right, harmonious way. Two further explains this as a prognosis and diagnosis of humanity. We are not what we ought to be but what we ought to be is inherent in the structure of what we are. Heaven bids and impels humans to realize their true self. Humans have the inborn ability to respond to heaven. One may obtain knowledge of divinity through his inner experience tizzy, and knowledge, developing his heavenly virtue. This is a central concern of Tu's theology, at the same time intellectual and affectional, a question of mind and heart at the same time. Topic. Theology of activity Huang Yang has named a third approach to Confucian theology interpreting the Neo-Confucianism of the brothers Cheng Hao and Cheng Yi Instead of regarding the divinity of Tian as a substance, this theology emphasizes its creative, life-giving activity that is within the world in order to transcend the world itself. Also in the works of Zhou Xi, heaven is discussed as always operating within beings in conjunction with their singular Xin Xin, heart mind. Neo-Confucians incorporated in Confucianism the discussion about the traditional concept of Li Li, variously translated as form, law, reason, order, pattern, organism, and most commonly, principle, regarding it as the supreme principle of the cosmos. The Chengs use Li interchangeably with other terms. For instance, discussing the supreme principle, Cheng Hao says that it is called change yi yi with respect to its reality, is called Dao Dao with respect to its Li, is called divinity shane shane with respect to its function, and is called nature xing xing with respect to it as the destiny in a person. Cheng Yi also states that the supreme principle with respect to Li it is called heaven tian tian, with the respect to endowment, it is called nature, and with the respect to its being in a person, it is called heart-mind." As it appears from these analogies, the Li is considered by the Chengs as identical with heaven. By the words of the Chengs, Huang clarifies the immanent transcendence of the Li, since it comes ontologically before things but it does not exist outside of things, or outside qi, the energy matter of which things are made. In Cheng's theology the Li is not some entity but the activity of things, Sheng. Explaining it through an analogy, according to the Shuowen Jiezi, Li is originally a verb meaning to work on jade. The Chengs further identify this activity as the true human nature. Sages, who have realized the true nature, are identical with the Li and their actions are identical to the creativity of the Li. Generally, in Confucian texts, gong gong, work, work of merit, or beneficial work, and day day, virtue, are frequently used to refer to the ways of becoming an honorable man of heaven, and thus they may be regarded as attributes of heaven itself. Zhu Xi himself characterizes heaven as extremely active, or vital, jian jian, while the earth is responsive shun shun. Topic. Humanity as the incarnation of heaven. The relationship between heaven and mankind, Tianrenzi Gtn Ren Gg, that is to say how heaven generates men and how they should behave to follow its order, is a common theme discussed in the Confucian theology of heaven. Generally, Confucianism sees humanity, or the form quality of the human being, Ren Ren, translatable as benevolence, love, humanity, as a quality of the God of heaven itself, and therefore it sees humanity as an incarnation of heaven. 
This theory is not at odds with the classical non Confucian theology, which views Wangdi as the incarnated god of heaven, since Wangdi is a representation of nobility and the pursuit of Confucianism is to make all humans noble or sages and holy men. According to Benjamin I. Schwartz, in the Zunzi it is explained that dissonances between man and heaven are only provisional. The human intellect which brings order to chaos is itself an incarnation of the powers of heaven. Heaven's working in the non-human sphere is described in a language which can almost be described as mystical. Once the normative human culture is realized, man is aligned with the harmonies of the universe. In the interactions between heaven and mankind, Tian Ren Gan Ying Tian Ren Gan Ying, written by the Han Dynasty scholar Dong Zongshu, humanity is discussed as the incarnation of heaven. Human physiological structure, thought, emotions and moral character are all modeled after heaven. In the Confucian discourse, ancestors who accomplished great actions are regarded as the incarnation of heaven, and they last as a form shaping their descendants. Ren is the virtue endowed by heaven and at the same time the means by which man may comprehend his divine nature and achieve oneness with heaven. Topic. Discourse about evil, suffering and world renewal In Confucian theology there is no original sin, and rather humanity, as the incarnate image of heaven's virtue, is born good In Confucian theodicy, the rise of evil in a given cosmic configuration is attributed to failings in the moral organization of qi, which depends on mankind's or the practicing subject. Shijin Zhu Ti Shi Jian Zhu Ti, in Zhu Shi, free will, that is to say the ability to choose whether to harmonize or not with the order of heaven, which is part of the creature's ability to co create with the creator. Paraphrasing Zhu Shi, each human activity, found in either the mind, the body, or in both of them simultaneously, either follows principles of the just heaven, or is corrupted by selfish appetites. Human qi, the primordial potential substance, organizes according to the yin and yang polarity in the two facets of xing xing, body, and shen shen, soul. Qi is open to both disorder, yin, and order, yang, bodily and heavenly appetites. While other creatures have a limited perfection, the human being alone has an unlimited nature. That is to say the ability to cultivate its qi in amounts and directions of its own choice, either yin or yang. While Confucians prescribe to be moderate in pursuing appetites, since even the bodily ones are necessary for life, when the proprietorship of corporeality prevails, selfishness and therefore immorality ensue, when evil dominates, the world falls into disaster, society shatters up and individuals are hit by diseases, giving the way for a new heavenly configuration to emerge. By the words of Zhu Xi, once heaven sees that human beings' immorality comes to its apex, it will crush everything up. What will be left is only a chaos, wherein all humans and things lose their being. Subsequently, a new world will emerge. Sufferings, however, are also regarded by Confucians as a way of heaven to refine a person preparing him for a future role. According to Mencius, when heaven is about to confer a great office on any man, it first exercises his mind with suffering, and his sinews and bones with toil. It exposes his body to hunger, and subjects him to extreme poverty. It confounds his undertakings. By all these methods it stimulates his mind, hardens his nature, and supplies his incompetencies. Likewise, Zhu Xi says, Helplessness, poverty, adversity, and obstacles can strengthen one's will, and cultivate his humanity Topic. Taoist theology Religious traditions under the label of Taoism have their own theologies which, characterized by henotheism, are meant to accommodate local deities in the Taoist celestial hierarchy. According to Stefan Feuchtwang, Taoism is concerned with the cultivation of local deities bringing them in alignment with the broader cosmology, in order to center through the power of right each locality with its peculiarities. It has hermetic and lay liturgical traditions, the most practiced at the popular level being those for healing and exorcism, codified into a textual corpus commissioned and approved by emperors throughout the dynasties. The Taoist canon, the core of Taoist theology is the concept of Tao Tao, the way, which is both the order of nature and the source of it. 
Differently from common religion or even Confucianism, Taoism espouses a negative theology declaring the impossibility to define the Tao. The core text of Taoism, the Tao Te Ching, opens with the verses, the Tao that can be said is not the eternal Tao, the name that can be said is not the eternal name. Feuchtwang explains the Tao as equivalent to the ancient Greek conception of physis, that is, nature, as the generation and regeneration of beings. Taoists seek perfection, which is immortality, achieved by becoming one with the Tao, or the rhythms of nature. Deities who take part in the Tao are arranged in a hierarchy. The supreme powers are three, the three pure ones, and represent the center of the cosmos and its two modalities of manifestation, yin and yang. The hierarchy of the highest powers of the cosmos is arranged as follows. Sanking San Qing, three pure ones. Jade purity, Yu Qing Yu Qing, heavenly honorable of the first beginning. Yuan Shi Tian Zun Yuan Shi Tianzun. High purity, Shang Qing Shang Qing. Heavenly Honorable of the Numinous Treasure, Ling Bao Tian Zun Ling Bao Tian Zun. Supreme Purity, Tai Ching Tai King. Heavenly Honorable of the Way and its Virtue, Dao De Tian Zun Dao De Tian Zun, incarnated historically as Laozi. Siyu Siyu, Four Sovereigns. Heoshan Jinke Zhizun Yuang Dadi Hao Tian Jin K G Zun Yu Huang Da Di. Most Honorable Great Deity the Jade King in the Golden Tower of the Clear Heaven Zongtian Ziwei Beiji Dadi Zhang Tian Ziwei Beiji Da Di Great Deity of the Purple Subtlety of the North Star at the Heart of Heaven Gaochen Shanggong Tianhuang Dadi Go Shane Shanggong Tian Huang Da Di Great Deity the Heavenly King in the High Palace at the Old Hook Shantian Zaofa Tuang De Qi Shang Tian Shao Fa Tu Huang De Qi Land appeasing soil ruler who imitates the law which sustains heaven is goddess Hutu. Topic: <trends>, Trends in modern Chinese political and civil theology. Interest in traditional Chinese theology has waxed and waned throughout the dynasties of the history of China. For instance, the Great Leap Forward enacted in the mid-20th century involved the outright destruction of traditional temples in accordance with Maoist ideology. From the 1980s onwards a revival has taken place, with public sacrifices held at temples meant to renew the perceived alliance between community leaders and the gods. In the 2010s, the great majority of China's population of 1.3 plus billion takes part in Chinese cosmological religion, its rituals and festivals of the lunar calendar. The cult of the Yellow Emperor is celebrated officially by the contemporary Chinese government. Even Chinese Buddhism, a religion which originally came from abroad, adapted to common Chinese cosmology by paralleling its concept of a triune supreme with Shakyamuni, Amitabha and Maitreya, representing respectively enlightenment, salvation and post-apocalyptic paradise. The Tathata Genru Genru Suchness is generally identified as the supreme being itself. In the wake of Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, many scholars understand Confucian theology as a natural theology. The Chinese theological conception of the God of Heaven's ongoing self creation, evolution in the divine city, and the broader cosmos is contrasted with that of God as a craftsman external to his creation, which is the type of theism of Christianity. Contemporary scholars also compare Confucianism and Christianity on the matters of humanity's good nature and of pneumatology, that is to say the respective doctrines of the Shen dynamism produced by God's activity and of the Holy Spirit, finding that the Confucian doctrine is truly humanistic since the Spirit is the creative dynamism always present in humanity, while in the Christian doctrine the Holy Spirit ultimately belongs to God alone. According to the philosopher Promise Shu, in the wake of Eric Vegelin, while Christianity fails to provide a public, civil theology, Confucianism with its idea of Tian, within broader Chinese cosmological religion, is particularly apt to fill the void left by the failing of Christianity. Paraphrasing Varro, Shu says, A society exists concretely, with regard to space, time, and human beings. Their organizational form and its symbols are sacred in their concreteness, regardless of speculations about their meaning. Quoting from Ellis Sandoz's works, Shu says, Civil theology consists of propositionally stated true scientific knowledge of the divine order. 
It is the theology discerned and validated through reason by the philosopher, on the one hand, and through common sense and the logic du cœur evoked by the persuasive beauty of mythic narrative and imitative representations, on the other hand. Also Joel Thorival characterizes the common Chinese religion, or what he calls a popular Confucianism, which has powerfully revived since the 1980s, consisting in the widespread belief and worship of five cosmological entities, Heaven and Earth Dida, the Sovereign or the Government Jun Jun, Ancestors Qin Qin, and Masters Xi Xi, as China's civil religion. See also Chinese folk religion Chinese cosmology Wufang Shangdai related culture San and Lil Enki Amanamanakanushi Deus Hainalim Tengri Abraham a Chinese names for the god of Abrahamic religions Chinese Christian theology Islam in China Han Kitab, an influential text of Chinese Islamic theology, which has shaped how many Chinese Muslim scholars have engaged with Confucian thought Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Citations Topic. Sources Adler, Joseph A. 2011. The Heritage of Non-Theistic Belief in China PDF, Conference Paper, Toward a Reasonable World, The Heritage of Western Humanism, Skepticism, and Freethought. San Diego, California. Berthrong, John H. 2011. Chinese Confucian Philosophical Theology. In Flint, Thomas P., Ray, Michael C., The Oxford Handbook of Philosophical Theology, OUP Oxford, pp. 574-596, doi, 10.1093, Oxford HB, 9780199596000, Berthrong, John H. 2004. Kai, Zongqi Chinese Aesthetics, Ordering of Literature, the Arts, and the Universe in the Six Dynasties. University of Hawaii Press. ISBN 0824827910. Chamberlain, Jonathan Chinese Gods, An Introduction to Chinese Folk Religion. Hong Kong, Blacksmith Books. ISBN 9789881775. Kaiser, John H. 2000. Understanding D and Tian, Deity and Heaven from Shang to Tang Dynasties. PDF. Sino Platonic Papers. Victor H. Mayer. ISSN 2157 9679. Didier, John C. In and Outside the Square, The Sky and the Power of Belief in Ancient China and the World, c. 4500 BC, AD 200. Sino-Platonic Papers. Victor H. Mayer 192. Volume 1, The Ancient Eurasian World and the Celestial Pivot, Volume 2, Representations and Identities of High Powers in Neolithic and Bronze China, Volume 3, Terrestrial and Celestial Transformations in Zhou and Early Imperial China. Foyk Twang, Stefan Chinese Religions. In Woodhead, Linda, Kawanami, Hiroko, Partridge, Christopher H., Religions in the Modern World, Traditions and Transformations 3 nd ed., London, Routledge, pp. 143–172, ISBN 1317439600 Kaiser, John H. 2008. Problematizing Contemporary Confucianism in East Asia. In Ritchie, Jeffrey, Teaching Confucianism, Oxford University Press, ISBN 0198042566. Lebrecht, Ulrich. Within the Four Seas. Introduction to Comparative Philosophy. Peters Publishers. ISBN 9042918128. Fowler, Janine D. 2005. An Introduction to the Philosophy and Religion of Taoism, Pathways to Immortality. Sussex Academic Press. 
ISBN 1845190866. Huang, Yang 2007. Confucian Theology, Three Models. Religion Compass. Blackwell, 1 4, 455-478. doi, 10.1111, j.1749-8171.2007-1. x. ISSN 2157-9679. Lagerway, John, Kalinowski, Mark 2008. Early Chinese Religion, Part 1, Shang through Han 1250 BC to 220 AD. Early Chinese Religion. Brill. ISBN 9004168354, Eno, Robert 2008. Shang State Religion and the Pantheon of the Oracle Texts. In Lagerway, John, Kalinowski, Mark, Early Chinese Religion, Part 1, Shang through Han, 1250 BC to 220 AD, Early Chinese Religion, Brill, pp. 41-102, ISBN 9004168354. Espison, Gregory, 2008. Latter Han Mass Religious Movements and the Early Taoist Church. In Lagerway, John, Kalinowski, Mark, Early Chinese Religion, Part 1, Shang through Han, 1250 BC to 220 AD, Early Chinese Religion, Leiden, Brill, pp. 1117 to 1158, ISBN 9004168354. Consulted HALSHS version, pages 1 to 56. Little, Stephen, Eichmann, Sean. 2000. Taoism and the Arts of China. University of California Press. ISBN 0520227859. Liu, Daji, Gong, Zuzang. Marxism and Religion. Religious Studies in Contemporary China. Brill. ISBN 9047428021. Medhurst, Walter H. 1847. A Dissertation on the Theology of the Chinese, with a view to the elucidation of the most appropriate term for expressing the deity, in the Chinese language. Mission Press. Original preserved at the British Library. Digitalist in 2014. Pankaneer, David W. 2004. A Brief History of Beiji Beiji Northern Cullman, with an excursus on the origin of the character D.D. Journal of the American Oriental Society, 124 2 doi, 10.2307, Pankaneer, David W. 2013. Astrology and Cosmology in Early China. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 1107006724. Pragadio, Fabrizio. 2013. The Encyclopedia of Taoism. Routledge. ISBN 1135796342. Hoffman, Jan. 1997. The Chinese Sky During the Han, Constellating Stars and Society. Brill. ISBN 9004107371. Tay, Wei Liang Kong Yue, The Martin Luther of Confucianism and His Vision of Confucian Modernity and Nation PDF. Secularization, Religion and the State. University of Tokyo Center of Philosophy. Yao, Xinjiang Chinese Religion, A Contextual Approach. London, A and C Black. ISBN 9781847064673. Tai, Wei Liang Zhao, Dunhua, 2012, The Chinese Path to Polytheism, in Wang, Robin R., Chinese Philosophy in an Era of Globalization, Sunni Press, ISBN 0791485501 Zhang, Xinzi A Reconstruction of Zhu Zai's Religious Philosophy Inspired by Leibniz, The Natural Theology of Heaven PDF Thesis. Open Access Theses and Dissertations. Hong Kong Baptist University Institutional Repository. Zhou, Jishu 2005. Old Chinese asterisk Ts and Proto-Indo-European Similarity in Religious Ideas and a Common Source in Linguistics PDF. Sino-Platonic Papers. 
Victor H. Mayer, 167. Zhou, Yuguang, 2012. To inherit the ancient teachings of Confucius and Mencius and establish modern Confucianism. PDF. Sino-Platonic Papers. Victor H. Mayer, 226. Article Shu, Promise, the 16th of November 2014. The Civil Theology of Confucius. Tian. Symbol. Vegelin View.